chapter 9, and we're starting on differentiation, and we're going to start by looking at uh, the derivative of sine and the derivative of cos. Now, I'm going to start this way. If we think about the sine function, the sine function does this, and if you think about what's happening to the gradient of the sine function, so if you remember differentiating is finding the gradient of the function, so what's happening to the gradient of this function? Well, at this point here, when x equals 0, the gradient is as steep as it gets, right? It's some value and it's some steep value. At this point here, that we've got a turning point. So that means the gradient has gone to 0 at that point there at 90 degrees or at pi by 2. At this point here, the gradient is just the same as the gradient here, only this one's negative and this one was positive. So the gradient is now negative and as negative as it's going to get, and that's at uh, pi or 180 degrees. And then we get, again, the gradient uh, sort of shallows out, stops being as negative, uh, gets closer and closer to zero, and then hits zero. So the gradient does that. And if we then just sort of repeat this process here, the, the gradient gets steeper and steeper and steeper until as steep as it's going to be. So this is the sort of shape of the graph of the gradient of the sine curve. And if you look at that and you keep the pattern going, then what we're getting is a, is a curve that does something like this, which hopefully is familiar to you as the cos curve. Now that's not a proof, but that really is the way to think about it. And if you differentiate cos, um, we're going to find out the derivative of cos is minus sine. Uh, well, you start with the cos curve, do the same arguments with the gradients, and you'll find that you end up with a curve, the shape of a sine graph. Okay, so the facts that we know then, if you start with sine x and we differentiate it, so we find d by dx of sine x, we end up with cos x. d by dx, derivative of cos x is minus sine x. Okay, so those are the two facts that we're going to get in section 9.1. Um, only uh, we need to prove them as well. So let's have a look at the proof. And the proof works like this, um, and I'm going to follow through fairly closely what it says in the book on page 232 here. Uh, first thing that we know, uh, or first thing that we need rather, is the limit as h tends to 0 of sine h over h. Now uh, we need this because we're going to do the limit definition of a derivative and prove the derivative of sine is cos, um, and this happens to be a limit that we're going to need. So, so there's no particular reason for this at the moment. I'm just showing you this because in a minute it's going to be helpful. Okay, So that is the limit as h tends to 0. Well, when h is small, sine h is approximately equal to h. Right? We know that from our small angle approximations. So that's the limit as h tends to 0 of h over h, which is 1. Okay, So uh, limit of sine h over h as h tends to 0 is 1. Uh, and we're also going to look at this limit, because we're going to need this one as well in a second, which is cos h take away 1 over h. Well, when h is small, cos h, we know, is 1 minus a half h squared. So 1 take away 1 cancels out. We get a half h squared over h, which is the h squared cancels with the h. So this is the limit as h tends to 0 of uh, minus a half h. In other words, it's 0. As h gets smaller, minus a half h gets towards 0, doesn't it? Okay. So um, if we now go about trying to actually find the derivative of a sine, well, hopefully we remember that the if uh, f of x equals sine x, then the limit definition of a derivative is this. The, the derivative is... The limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And if you don't remember that, then um, go back into the first year book and remind yourself of, of the, f I, think, I, mean, I think it's the first bit of the differentiation chapter of the first year book. So this f of x is sine x, so this is limit as h tends to 0 of sine x plus h minus sine of x all divided by h. You might expect then, it's only a couple of chapters ago that we were looking at sine of uh, a plus b, so this is going to be sine cos sine cos x h h x plus sine in between all divided by h. Um, so what have we got here then? Well if we uh, 
split this up into um, limit as h tends to zero. Uh, this is sine x times cos minus sine x. So it's sine x times cos of h minus 1, which I get from taking these two terms here and then factorizing. And then we've got plus sine h cos x. And instead of writing it all over h, I'm going to put the denominator over here and over here. Okay, so these two fractions here, if I combine them, would have a common denominator of h. I would have all that on the top, but I'm just splitting it into two separate ones. Um, now, cos h minus 1 over h, we just prove the limit as that tends to 0 is, uh, is 0. So this bit here is going to vanish. And we just said limit of sine h over h is 1. So sine h over h tends to 1. So all of this lot here differentiates to cos x. Okay? And the very similar thing happens if you start with uh, cos x there. Cos of x plus h here. And then you get cos cos, take away sine sine, split, um, factorize the cos x terms, split them up into a separate fractions over the same denominator. And then uh, using these two factors from the top, everything cancels out in the way that you wanted to. And we end up with a cos x there, okay? So the derivative of sine is cos, the derivative of cos is minus sine. So the way I'd suggest that we go about remembering these is this. The derivative of sine is cos. Derivative of cos is minus sine. If I differentiate minus sine, that differentiates to minus cos, because it's derivative of sine but with a minus sign in front of it. The derivative of minus cos is the same as the derivative of cos but with a different sine, right? So the derivative of cos is minus sine, so the derivative of minus cos is sine. So SC, SC, S, go down the ladder to differentiate and go up the ladder to integrate. So if you wanted to integrate cos, you get sine. If you wanted to integrate minus sine, that integrates to cos and so on, all right? So that's a helpful little uh, sort of aid memoir that you might find useful there. Okay, now the next thing that happens in the book is they go into examples where we're not just differentiating cos or sine, we're differentiating it with uh, with a, a k in there. So it's not just sine x we're differentiating, it's sine, x, uh, sine of k times x. Now I'm going to leave these for the moment because when we've got the chain rule, these are actually just chain rule questions and we can show that this is true. So if you want, you can take this as true and you can look at example two and three. And I think their idea is they want you to do the derivative of sine and cos from first principles. And it's not too tricky, so it gets us into the chapter. But then if all we know is the derivative of sine and cos, and we don't have the derivative of things like sine 2x, there's not really anything to put in the exercise. So they throw us that as a bit of information, but without any explanation. Well, since in two sections time we're going to do the chain rule anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and do the chain rule, and then um, after I've done the chain rule, we'll come back to why that's true and look at those examples. Okay, so I'm going to stop there on section 9.1. We'll do section 9.2 and 9.3, and then we'll come back. Um, if you're watching this... Uh, and you can't find it. If you go to my channel, find the playlists in the core year two playlist, everything will be in the right order in there.